Hello all you Lens creators and welcome to a special Halloween Lens Studio tutorial. In this video we're going to learn how to make objects follow the camera in augmented reality. Whether you want to have a zombie, a spooky skeleton dancing, or even a severed hand stalking your users, this is the video for you. So you'll see in this example that the users can control where the hand is placed on the ground and when the hand is pushed further away it starts running, or crawling? towards the camera. I achieved this effect by combining some really useful Lens Studio features with a little scripting to tell the hand when to move and when to stay put. So let's build this project from scratch by starting a new project. And the first step to any project is to import your assets so that you can use them in the project. So let's import our 3D animation of the severed hand. And I found this model on TurboSquid.com which is a super useful resource for 3D assets and it has a lot of good quality free content. If you decide to download something from TurboSquid, make sure that the 3D model is in OBJ format, or if it's an animation, it's in the FBX format. If you already know how to convert those formats, then don't listen to me, what do I know anyway? Okay, so now I need to start adding these resources to the scene. I'll start by adding a world object controller script, which will allow me to place the hand on the ground and give the users the ability to interact with it. I'll delete the example project and drag the severed hand under the world object controller. So you'll see that the hand doesn't look like it's tracking to the ground yet and that's because we still need to add device tracking to the camera. So we'll click on the camera and click add component in the inspector panel and find device tracking. And then we can leave the tracking mode on surface so that it looks like it's on the ground. We can also add a realistic shadow to the hand by finding the mesh object and changing shadow mode to caster and making sure that the object's skin is selected and then in our directional light object we will check shadows. Now let's go in the animation mixer and we can see how I have my layers set up. In the clip view you'll see that I have two clips created, the idle and the walk animations. Ultimately, I want the idle animation to play when the hand is far away from the camera and the walk animation to play when the hand is close. So to achieve this, we're going to start by adding the behavior script to the scene. For the trigger, we're going to use the super handy distance check and set object A to world object controller and object B to camera. And then the compare type will be less than and let's use the distance 300. So now when the hand gets within 300 units of the camera, we can send a trigger to do something. Let's copy this behavior script and paste it underneath and change the compare type to is greater than and increase the distance to 350. Now we have a good threshold of distance and two separate triggers to play our animations and move the hand. So what we're going to do is set our response types to send custom trigger. And then let's name them idle and walk to match our animations for clarity. We're going to use this trigger in a script that we create ourselves, which is pretty neat. So let's create a new script and call it hand controller and then add it to the scene. And then let's take a look in the behavior script. You'll see starting on line 16 that the comments show the global API usage for the behavior script. So we can copy line 21 of the code and paste it in our own script. And make sure to take out the two forward slashes to remove the comment. Now we can change the trigger name to idle and make sure it's in quotations so that it's recognized as a string. The callback is a function that we'll create that we can call when the trigger happens, which in our case will be when the hand gets close enough. I'll just name this function idle and leave it empty for now. And then we can copy this and paste underneath and add our walk function as well. So we need to play and stop the two animations based on which function is running. So we'll need to add the animation mixer component to our script on the top. Let's look up animation mixer in the Lens Studio documentation so that we can create our logic and the functions. We'll go to lensstudio.snapchat.com and search animation mixer. Here we'll see what we need to do to create an input statement at the top as well as how to play and stop each layer. In the walk function, I'll first make sure to stop playing the idle animation, and then I'll play the walk animation with zero offset and use negative one to loop the animation. I'll do the same for the idle function, but reverse the layers. And now you'll see that when I drag the hand further away, it starts the walk animation, and when it's close, it idles. Now all we need to do is program it to move towards the camera. 
To do this, we'll need to create an update event, which is called once every single frame. What we want to do every frame is check if the hand is close enough, and if it's not, then move it closer. So let's search update event one word on the Lens Studio site and copy the example in our script. We only want the hand to move if it's walking, so let's create an empty variable at the top called walking. In the walk function, we'll set walking to true, and in the idle function, we'll set it to false. And then in the update, we can add an if statement that says if walking is true, then we'll move it. Now we need to get the positions of both the camera and the hand in order to calculate the distance between them. We'll input them both as scene objects at the top, as well as create a variable for each object to represent its transform, position, as well as the x and z distances. So basically, because the object will be running on the ground, we don't ever need to change the hand's position at the y-axis. This means we just need to calculate the distance between them on a 2D plane. So by using a little math from high school, we can get the x and the z distances and apply the Pythagorean theorem to get the distance in a straight line from the hand to the camera. Once we have all of our variables created at the top, we can go back into the update event. Now remember, all of this code inside the event will happen once every frame. First, we'll need to set the A position and the B position to each of the object's current world positions. And then we'll calculate the X and the Z vectors by subtracting each of the object's X and Z coordinates. And then, according to Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So to simplify this, we'll use the math.square root and the math.power functions to create our equation. So this will give us our distance, but we don't want the hand to move the entire distance in just one frame. So we'll normalize the x and the z distances by dividing them by the total distance. Then we'll subtract the object's x and z positions from the incremented distances and use event.data.getDeltaTime to account for different frame rates across different devices. We can also multiply by another variable that I'll name speed, which will help us control the hand movement easier. I think 60 is a good speed, so we'll set it to that. Finally, we'll set the hand's position to our new incremented position, and now, every frame, it'll move a little closer towards the camera, no matter which way it's facing. The last thing you might notice is that the hand is not actually facing the camera at all times. We can easily fix this by going into the World Object Controller and disabling rotation in the Manipulate component. And then we'll go to our Severed Hand Scene object and add a Look At component. We'll set the camera as our target, and then change the Aim to Z, and adjust our Offset rotation just a bit, and now it always faces the camera. And there you have it, a fully functioning 3D object following your users. I'll go ahead and post a link to the script I just created in the description below so that you can add this to your own project. Then all you need to do is add the behavior script, custom triggers, and match them to the script. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and share your creations with me. I'm really excited to see what sort of ideas you can come up with. Happy Halloween, everyone!